Ooh, this was difficult. Let's just chop it. This does seem a little risky. That was loud. Hey, 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 hey. hey. I'm gonna make such a freaking mess. Hello everyone and welcome back to another plenty little video. We are currently on the floor because we're gonna be doing some plant chores. Specifically, we're gonna be doing some moss pole plant chores. I have a couple of plants on moss poles and today I just want to do some uh, chores with them. So basically we have one plant that I want to put on a moss pole. We have one plant that needs a moss pole extension. And we have one plant that we're gonna do a whole freaking surgery on. If that sounds fun to you, go ahead and grab yourself a cozy little drink, snack, or maybe some plant chores of your own, and let's get to it. Alrighty, so I am not sure who to start with. We could start with the easy one, or we could start with the hardest one, and I am honestly, I'm leaning towards the hard one because I am excited to get this done. So, this is my philodendron Soderoi. She has been living on this moss pole for about a year, I would say. When I first got her, she had pretty big leaves. Quickly after that, she sort of reverted into her juvenile state. I don't know why. I basically repotted her, I put her on a moss pole and everything, and slowly but surely she started to gain back her size, and now she's like, she's not, she's still pretty small, I would say, but she's definitely sizing up, and she is pushing out a new leaf over here as well, which by the way, when your plants are pushing out a new leaf, it's not the best idea to do stuff with them, but YOLO. What I did with this plant a couple of months ago in preparation for this, but I just got lazy. I chopped this, the stem in a few places, which is why you see now there is some babies down here. And this whole part up here, this part that I want to make basically into a new plant, is sustained with the roots that are in the moss pole. So this upper portion of the plant has no roots in the pot. So what I want to do is basically remove it from this moss pole, remove the roots, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully in one piece, pot it back up, put it on a new moss pole on one of these, um, oh, on one of these closed back moss poles that I have been really liking lately, and hopefully get her to become big and beautiful again. So that is the plan and also i like i said i did this months ago and i wrapped the whole upper portion of the plan of the plant uh, in uh, cling wrap just so i can make sure that the roots actually stay moist because moss poles i am <laughs> i am sometimes i'm really good at them and keeping up with them and keeping them moist but sometimes i am absolutely horrible at it and the plastic wrap method is really 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 great to ensure that your moss poles stay very nice and moist as you can see she has some roots over here my goal is to basically i don't know where i chopped it um let me see let me see okay so i chopped it back here i don't know if you'll be able to tell but this is the chop so this whole portion from up here is a different plant I don't know if I'll keep it all. I might make some more chops. We will see. Also, this plant, the last time I checked it, did have some thrypses, which is never good, but I am not too worried about it. Pests are just part of the plant care routine, and you can't, you can't get rid of them 100%. And I know that there will always be some pests on my plants, Plus the, the thrips that I did find on this plant, they were the, the really juvenile larva ones, which don't scare me too much because honestly, they don't, like, I feel, I feel like spider mites do a, a heck of a lot more damage than those little, little thrips. Uh, I don't know, should I even unpot this or maybe keep this? Nah, I'm gonna unpot it all. I'm gonna unpot it all. I have checked it. I don't see any thrips right now on her which is really fabulous. Of course, I will be treating her and continue to treat her for thrips just on Kais, but again, I don't usually, like usually thrips don't take down my plants, which is great. This is quite wet. I guess I watered it recently. I don't know if I'll keep the bottom section of the plant. I might give it away because honestly, I'm not interested in having multiples of one plant, especially like big plants. 
I don't want that. I just want like a nice looking big one. So I will most likely give this, the rest of the plant away or I might pot up one of the babies uh, with the big mama plant, we'll see. But honestly, I, I don't like doing that too much. I do like to have just like one main branch because if you have multiple branches, I do feel like the nutrients in the soil, like each, they, they basically the different plants have to fight for the nutrients in the soil, which is not something I want. And also sometimes one of the plants or oftentimes one of the plants is faster and grows better and bigger and more beautiful. And then the other one is lagging behind. And then if you have to like chop and extend it or something, or even just do regular extension, it's always a little bit of a pain. So I kind of want to avoid that. This moss pole is held together by cable ties. So I'm cutting those open just so I can actually open this moss pole. But yeah, I started my, mm, Jesus. I started my moss pole journey off with these wired uh, mesh moss poles and they work great, but honestly they are a lot of upkeep because you have to water them like every, honestly, sometimes even every, uh, every day during like the summer months and stuff. And recently I've been really getting into the close back moss poles and those have been super, super easy. So I do pretty much, I wanna switch all of my, my whole collection to those close back moss poles. I use moss poles from Plant Scraper. I find them pretty good and they have actually like pretty big sizes, which is what I'm interested in. I don't want those small dinky little <laughs> moss poles. Like what am I supposed to do with that? I do like their moss poles quite a bit and I have been using them for a while now. Okay, we did manage to open the moss pole, so I'm just gonna gently, gently, gently remove the moss from the roots. Oh, this will be, this will be a bit of a challenge. I can already tell, but that's all right. I like a challenge. Maybe I should have wetted it, the, the moss, before I started doing this. Maybe. My plans for this plant are that I wanna put her into semi-hydro because you see the roots have been growing mostly in the sphagnum moss. So that means there won't be like the transitional shock from going from soil to semi-hydro, which is great. So I really wanna try it in semi-hydro with the moss pole and just see, see what kind of results I will get. I am very, very curious. I have been really liking semi-hydro lately. It seems like a pretty good substrate so yeah, I'm excited to keep on using it. There is quite a bit of roots in here. You won't be able to tell much, but I can tell she rooted pretty well in here, which is a good sign, but I shouldn't have left this so long because now it's gonna be a little bit of a nightmare to get it off. And question is how much of the roots I can actually save because I'm sure I am, I'm, about, I'm about to rip roots open. Hopefully it won't be too much damage. Hopefully we can preserve as much of the plant as possible. to free the section that I want to keep. This was, oh, this was difficult. Like I knew this wasn't going to be an easy task, but I did not expect it to be this time consuming and difficult. She definitely has a good, good root system over here. However, I did break off quite a few roots, which is unfortunate, but oh well, what can you do? So looking at the plant right now, I am thinking that I'm gonna get rid of this bottom section because these are all juvenile leaves and I'm not really interested in them. I think I'm gonna chop this section into two and then have basically two vines growing because if I put this up as is right now, it will already be basically like up half the moss pole. Like this is the height of the moss pole. 
And then I will have to extend it soon and that's honestly kind of a pain. Plus, if I don't chop it, most of these roots will be not going into the semi-hydro. I mean, I could put them directly into the new moss pole. That is also an option, but I don't know. I definitely think I'm gonna chop. Maybe, I mean, this has like an okay-ish root system, but I do feel like I wanna chop this old leaf. It's not looking really great, so I think I'm gonna just chop this and then plant this section into the semi-hydro. This, this leaf might also go. I'll definitely chop. Should I chop it? Oh my god, I don't know. Let's just chop it. Let's just chop it. I don't care. So this is the chopped section and I might keep her or put her back into the pot. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. That could be cute. And then this section do I want to chop this leaf as well or just keep it as is? See, I am so indecisive when it comes to this kind of stuff. I think what I am what I'm leaning towards is to actually keep this section as is, try to get these roots back here into the new moss pole because we have, for example, this really juicy, juicy root, and then get these roots down here into the semi-hydro. This is really not a lot of root for the semi-hydro, but considering this, like the, the plant was living from the roots that were in the moss pole anyway, I think she should be fine. Hopefully, I don't know. I don't know. I could maybe put these two nodes into the semi-hydro. Maybe that would be better. Where's my little pot? I do have a 15 centimeter little pot. Yeah, actually, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the last two nodes into the pot and then these upper nodes I'm gonna put into the new moss poles. So first things I need to do is actually remove as much of the sphagnum from these, um, these lower nodes because I don't want that in the sphagnum. Also, I don't know, but I feel like some of these roots, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but some of these roots, they look a little bit black and a little bit rotten, so I don't even know. Yeah, this is definitely rotty. Um, oh, it smells very, very, like, you know that typical philodendron smell, but it doesn't have that typical philodendron smell. It's more, it's more fruity, sweet, kind of lemony maybe even. Interesting, very interesting. It smells very nice. Usually I don't like the smell of philodendrons. It's very <laughs> overpowering, but this one is kind of nice. Okay, I don't see much uh, rot on the bottom portion, but this upper portion definitely has quite a bit of rot. And I would assume that's due to, that is due to the moss pole sometimes drying out. I'm just gonna try and cut these away just so I can still have some viable roots and so it doesn't rot in the semi-hydro. The smell is very overpowering. I am so surprised by the smell. But like I said, it doesn't smell horrible, so mm -hmm. I'm fine with this. And this is very tedious. Removing sphagnum from roots is so annoying. And I'm not gonna wash these roots like I would with, with water or with dirt. Like I don't mind if there is just a little bit of sphagnum on the, on the roots because the roots will expand and grab onto the semi-hydro. So I'm not that worried about it. I'm just gonna kind of shake it. Maybe that will help just to get as much of it as possible. I do see another little rotty root, so, or is it? Maybe that one's not rotten. Sometimes it's so hard to tell. With, with some plants, it's so hard to tell whether the roots are rotted or not because sometimes they have such fine roots and sometimes they're even like a darker color and it's just impossible to tell. Okay, so this will be going into the pot. This does seem a little a little risky, but I don't know. I'm just gonna do it and keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. I'm gonna move this, this mess that I made here to the side for now so we can assemble our moss pole. So like I said, I am using moss poles from Plant Scraper. This is their XL uh, size. It is 15 centimeters and that was loud. 
And I really like their mouse poles. They're nice, they're cool. They're cool, they're cool. I do also have a, uh, the little small front facing moss poles, but those are small, or front opening moss poles. But those are small and I do not like them, uh, but I will use it on my Esmeralda Dense because she has small internodal spacing. Loud noise incoming. <sighs> but that is so satisfying, removing that tape. But yeah, this is a pretty big moss pole, which is why I like it. It's big, it is stable. So yeah, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and crease the edges. Can you even see what I'm doing down here? I don't know, but it's not particularly interesting. It's just building a moss pole. I'm pretty sure many of you have already done this or seen the process of it. But basically, first things first, I'm gonna crease these edges just so it's gonna be easier for me to work with it. I don't know how I'm gonna get the... <laughs> The roots in the in the in the moss. I might have to actually build the the pole, set it all up, and then fill it with moss. I think that's what's gonna have to happen, honestly, here. Because I don't know how else I would get the get the roots into the pole. So yeah, I think that's my, that might be my best option. Usually I don't like doing it that way. I use I uh, usually like to you know, fill my moss pole, close it, then set it up, yada, yada, yada. Let's then close it up since we're already here. And we'll go from there. Alrighty, so I assembled my moss pole, just buckled it in the back. Very, very easy and simple and quick. This was the pot that she was in before, a 17 centimeter, and now I plan on doing a 15. I could do an even smaller pot, but I think she will be fine in a bigger pot. So yeah, we're gonna be filling her up with some semi hydro. I have been really, really liking semi hydro. I mean, granted, I only have been using it for a very, very short time, but for the time that I used it, I have liked it. So oh, I don't know how the hell am I gonna do this, but let's just let's just let's just start doing it, and then we will figure it out later, I suppose, because. I seriously have no idea. Also, this is my first time using a, a moss pole with semi-hydro, which is definitely a whole nother experience. And I don't know how it will go, but hopefully, hopefully it will go well. Kind of in my mind, in my mind, I feel like this will be very stable because, you know, the rocks are obviously, or the semi-hydro, which is rocks, is obviously a lot more heavier than soil so in theory in my little in my little potato brain it sounds like it should be more um, stable so hopefully that will be the fact can I actually bury these roots I can so I think this is what I'm gonna do so this kind of works maybe I will okay let me just get these roots in here maybe I should also Velcro. Uh, alright, alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Actually, let me first fill it a little bit more. I don't see what I'm doing. This is so not how you should do things, by the way. I am just... T this is basically my whole plant journey is gonna teach you how to not do things, alright? So, basically, whatever I do and whatever you see me doing, you do the complete freaking opposite and you'll be great. <laughs> because if you do the things that I do, I don't know how successful you <laughs> will be. But, oh well, I mean, my plants are doing okay-ish. So I would say I'm doing fine-ish, but yeah. It's all about experimenting and I think that is the most fun part about plant care. It's experimenting, it's trying out new things. It's, you know, just all the, all the jazz. Jesus, this root is huge. Maybe could I get this root into, oh God, I didn't, I need like a little stick to, to, to poke things into the pole, but I don't have one right now and I'm too lazy to get one. But yeah, I do have this one huge freaking root and I think if I could get it into the semi-hydro, it would activate and really help with the growth. I kind of did it. I kind of did it, not really. <laughs> oh, there we go, there we go, there we go. It's almost there. It's almost there. I think that's fine. I think that's fine, so I'm gonna continue 
filling her with semi-hydro. I hope this plant really appreciates this. Also, the reason why I decided to plant her in the semi-hydro is because this plant is just, it's one of those plants that I like, but I don't love, but I could love if it were to grow great. And I do wanna try out more philodendrons in semi-hydro. And I was looking at this plant. It's not one of those plants that, that needs constant hydration. But I feel like since it's since it's had since it had trouble with sizing up and stuff like that, I feel like a constant flow of water might actually be what this plant needs. Also, because I am using a nursery with drainage holes, my my semi hydro does like to fall out, but I don't mind that at all. I'm gonna make such a freaking mess. This is gonna be unbelievable. <laughs> I'm gonna have so much to clean afterwards. See, that's the thing I hate about plant care. Love taking care of my plants, love doing repots, love doing plant chores, all of that stuff. Love it to death. However, cleaning after doing plant chores. Oh my God, oh my God, somebody freaking shoot me. Somebody shoot me in the head. I hate cleaning after doing repots or any plant chores because it's always so freaking messy. But I think we're done. And this moss pole is quite stable, which I love. She is looking pretty damn good in this new setup. I am not gonna even lie. So basically all we need to do now is fill up the moss pole and pray to Jesus everything goes well. Also, I, I just realized that I didn't pl uh, pot up the little baby. I just realized that. But honestly, you know what? I'm gonna keep it just one plant. I, like if it grows compact and bushy like this and it sizes up, I think one plant just is gonna be a bigger and better impact. So I'm gonna keep it one plant. I'm just gonna move, oh no, that's the big root, isn't it? No, it's not, okay, cool. I'm just gonna move this into this hole so it's gonna be a little bit better, I think. For like big climbing philodendrons, I think one main vine is honestly a better, a better option. So yeah, I think she looks cute. I am gonna fill her with some uh, some moss pole mixture, and this is actually also from Plant Scraper. It is their specialty moss pole mix that has it has cocoa coir, it has sphagnum moss, it has I don't know what else is in here. Maybe some bark, but yeah, I do like this mix, even though again it is a little bit of a mess, but that's all right. But yeah, I do like this mix quite a bit. It works for me quite well. I like that it's not just pure sphagnum moss because I do feel like the plants really like bark. And I also have a mix with some tree fern fiber mixed in, which is something that plants really love because in nature, of course, plants climb up trees. So I think the kind of the texture of the bark and of the tree fern fiber really helps them feel at home. At least, at least that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm kind of telling myself and that's what I'm hoping for. The moss is falling into the, into the semi-hydro a little bit, which is not great, but also I don't think it should hurt it. I mean, it's just on the top layer. So as long as it's not anywhere near the roots where it can stay really wet, I think it should be fine. This is very much an experiment. I'm just doing this for the shits and giggles and I have no idea how this will turn out. Maybe this will be horrible and maybe like in a month or two or three, I will be like, no, this was the worst decision ever and I lose the plan. But again, I am willing to risk it for the biscuit because something, something in my gut, something in my gut is telling me that this plant will absolutely thrive in this setup and that she will absolutely love it. So let's hope that my gut instinct is correct. And if it's not, oh well. Alrighty, I got myself a little skewer thingy just so I can push the moss down into the pole better. I made such a freaking mess. It is 
ridiculous. Oh God, but oh well, it's fine, it's fine. We'll clean the mess up. That's not a big deal, I guess, I suppose. Oh, almost gra <laughs> grabbed my semi-hydro. That's the wrong thing, honey. You are not filling the moss pool with semi-hydro. That would be Jesus. Can you even, like, do people do that? I'm sure somebody tried it. I'm sure there must be somebody who tried filling a moss pool with semi-hydro. I am sure. I am freaking sure of it. Alrighty, I think I am happy with this. I will leave a little bit of room at the top of the pole so I can put a little, a little cup because that's how I water my moss poles. I put a little cup on there and then whenever I need to water it, actually I have a great example here. Whenever I need to water it, I just pull some, put some water in this cup and the cup has a little hole at the bottom and it slowly dribbles in water and it's super efficient, super easy. I love easy and efficient solutions. So I'm just gonna fill in some of the top with this mess that I made. Again, I did cover up the semi-hydro with the moss pole mixture. So I'm just gonna remove some of it so it's not completely covered. I don't think this should be a problem, honestly, but just, just in case, because you never know. Because like I said, I've never used this kind of setup, but we're good, we're done. And I think she looks actually pretty freaking amazing. Very stable on this setup and hopefully she will appreciate this. Please appreciate the upgrade and grow well for me. Otherwise you're gonna go in the bin. Just kidding. <laughs> but yeah, that is her all done and I will give away the rest of this plant because I don't, I don't need two soda roys. Like I'm fine with this one. In the event that something does go wrong, I, I can always chop this one up. Like I have plenty of notes here, so I'm not worried at all. Now, we need to continue after I make this huge ass mess and I'm not gonna even pull out my, my, my mat or like my repotting thingy because it's full of soil so I'm just gonna work on the ground. I'm just gonna work on the ground and clean it up later. That might be, actually no, never mind. I will be getting my, my mat because otherwise it will be a mess. Oh God, I do have a lot of sphagnum here. You know what? I'm gonna use that sphagnum to fill this little moss pole, which will be used for my philodendron esmeraldense, which is the next little guy that we're gonna be working on. And I will be putting her on this small open front moss pole. Mainly, does this have like a foil? I can't tell. Uh, do you have a foil or don't you have a foil? I seriously can't tell. I don't think she has. Maybe she doesn't. I guess she doesn't. These are from uh, Thickly, I believe. It seems like they don't. Okay, maybe I removed it. I, don't, I have no clue. But yeah, I'm gonna be putting her on the smaller one mainly because I, uh, from what I've seen from this plant, it doesn't have a uh, big internodal spacing. So I don't feel the need to put her on like such a big, moss pole like this because it will just be a big moss pole for half the time. So I would rather put it on a smaller one and then if she, if she with time does require a bigger moss pole, I can always just move her or attach her. And that's gonna be a lot easier for me than to, or like not easier, but it'll just, be, it'll just look prettier, you know what I mean? But yeah. I usually do avoid these small, small moss poles because if you have a plant that has quite a bit of internodal spacing, then the, these small moss poles will literally grow out so fast and you're like you have to extend them all the freaking time and that's not something that I want to do. Personally, it is not something I want to do. I haven't used one of these front backs in, or front opening moss poles in a while, so I honestly forgot how to use them. Also, I think I might have folded them at the wrong side. Whoopsie poopsie. Hopefully I'll still be fine. But yeah, I definitely prefer the closed bags. I mean, the front bags, they can be useful. Uh, and I do like how you can basically buckle your plants into the into the pole. It's really helpful for for rooting your plants. And in this kind of situation where you have to switch up the whole moss pole 
experience, it's definitely more handy, but I don't know. I haven't found one that's like in a big size that's available uh, to ship over here with like norm, like, like an okay price for an okay price. So I just stick with the regular ones that have the hexagonal design because they aren't too, too expensive. And yeah. I did start off my journey into moss poles with the wired ones just because of the price. They were more accessible over here. And honestly, we didn't even really have a lot of these kind of plasticky closed back options back in like even like a year ago. So I'm glad that we do now because this is definitely more convenient than making wired poles. And also they just, they just stay wet longer and it's just so much more convenient, which is great. Alrighty, oh God, this took quite a while, but we are done. We set up the little moss pole. She is looking cute. I'm gonna fill her in with some more of this moss. And I think this will be plenty enough for this particular plant. Now let's go ahead and repot her. And now this is, she has quite a few plants in here and I don't wanna keep all of them because just, just for the same reason as for uh, with the Soderoy, I want basically one, maybe two main plants in the pot. Firstly, so they don't fight for the resources and they can grow nicely and big. And secondly, because I don't like when there's like two different plants and they grow at different speeds. So yeah, also this is a plant that I recently got and I am repotting it for the first time and removing all this horrible, horrible, horrible soil. Usually I wouldn't like remove all of the soil, but like I said, in this case, because I just recently got this and I wanna, I wanna put it into a better uh, home because I hate, 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 hate the soil that comes with most house plants when you buy them through like regular shops if they're not. And, and of course, of freaking course, she has a plug. I, can you see it? I, I freaking, I hate plugs. I hate them so much. Like how hard is it to just take this thing off before you repot your plants? It's so common, I don't understand it. It drives me insane. It keeps the roots too wet. It just, it compa- Oh my God, I don't. I mean, they're, they're okay. Like they're fine if you grow your plants in a great environment. Same with, with like this horrible substrate, peat moss. It's fine if you have really, really great conditions, but most of the time, 90% of the time, most of us do not have greenhouse conditions where we keep our plants. I sure as hell don't. Like on a good day, I have decent conditions on a bad day, I have horrible conditions and I can't be growing plants in such mediums in these conditions. So I definitely do have to make sure that I have a pretty chunky, airy substrate. Otherwise, it's just a mess. Okay, I don't know, how, this plant, it's so freaking uh, bushy. I can't even tell. I thought it would just all fall apart, kind of, but it's not. Uh, so I guess I'll just start dividing it, but it's so hard to see where the divisions even are because it's just, it's such a jumbled up mess. Should I just pull? Should I just pull and see what will happen? Like, I seriously can't tell where the plants are. Oh, okay, I'm pulling. I am pulling, oh God, that's always such a hard thing to do when you divide plants, but it's gonna be for the better. It's gonna be for the better. Okay, so we have one plantlet over here. We have one plantlet over here, and this is basically the main chunk I wanted. This is the main plant. I wanted this chunk, nothing else pretty much. This is also a little planty chunk, so I can take that away. Yeah, this is the main growth point. It has the biggest leaves, and this is the one I wanted. It has also a pretty good root system. Now, I might put up, hmm, okay, let me let me separate all of these. And again, I will, I don't know what I should do with these. Like there's so many of them. I don't wanna keep them. 
Maybe, you know what, maybe I will keep them as like a little filler plant, put them somewhere where I don't have, or where I would like some greenery, but I'm not too, like it's not the best conditions, but I would just like some greenery anyway. I think that could be, that could be good. So I think I'm gonna keep these two, put this up together, and then these two, or these, like there's like what, how many, three, four, Five plants in here, that's crazy. Maybe I'll actually keep this one. This one's maybe prettier, but it doesn't have the best root system. So yeah, these ones I will probably pot up in a different pot and just keep them as a little filler plant. Now I need to decide who I will be putting up as my main plant on a moss pole. Definitely this part. This part is gorgeous. I'll just remove the lower leaves because I don't need those. And she, she does have, uh, her newest leaf is a bit stuck, which is not something I appreciate, but, oh, well, it is what it is, I guess. I mean, I guess I could just break off this sheath. Why not? Why not? Even though whenever I do stuff like that, I always break the plant and I always break the leaf. And you really shouldn't play with new leaves. You should, you really shouldn't play with emerging leaves, but here I am playing with emerging leaves. Should I just pull it? Should I just pull it? Oh God, watch it snap. Watch it snap and maybe sad. Why do I do this? I shouldn't be doing this. This is, okay, I did it. <laughs> I did it. Okay, there we go. Hopefully she'll be fine. Please be fine. Anyway, yeah, this is definitely the part that I'll be keeping. And then between these two, this has a new growth point coming in but this one has a better root system. I think I want only two and I think I'm gonna go with these two. Yes, yes, that's happening. And I will probably just use the same pot. Like the roots are, I think they should be fine in here for quite a bit. Let's go ahead and fill this with some soil. I have, my soil mixture over here. This is some Soil Ninja with some just random mix mixed in that I had before. Soil Ninja Philodendron Monstera. It's the mix I use for a majority of my plants. I am actually gonna put in my moss pole first. Yes, I need my moss pole first. I love this mix. It's my favorite mix and it's just so easy and convenient. When I started my journey, I used to make my own mixes and I still think you can make your own amazing mix that will probably cost you cheaper, but I'm just at the point in my life where I would rather pay a little bit more and have a product that's already done and works well instead of doing it myself. I know that sounds so bad. I have seen a lot of success with this mixture. I don't wanna, I don't wanna switch it up and it's just, it's a pretty good mix and I can financially swing it without being like, it's not too horribly expensive. Where did I put my plant? <laughs> oh, there it is. I was like, where the hell is my plant? I don't know if you can even see anything, but I am down here and we are just gonna put this, I'm gonna try to kind of position it so the, so the little aerial roots, these guys over here, are facing the moss pole or are close to the moss pole so that the sphagnum moss can actually, I mean, I could buckle them in. Yeah, let's actually buckle them in, I forgot. That's that's like the the nice thing about these, oh God, if I can open it. But the nice thing about these front opening poles, like I mentioned before, is that you can buckle in your plants and it makes it a lot easier for it to grab onto the pole. Okay, so this one, I guess I'll face like this, guess? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how this will turn out. Oh God, there's quite a bit of roots. Also, there's a little leaf in the soil. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna remove that little leaf. It's bothering me. You you were bothering me, sir. I'm sorry, but if you bother me, you go away. That is the rule of life. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and buckle this in to the best of my abilities. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing and I am so sorry, but I am too, too lazy to move the camera. Plus it's not anything too in interesting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and backfill it and be done with this. This was also quite a task. I always think that plant chores will be like, 
so easy and relaxing and so fast to do and it's never such it's not much work it's just two repots like what could be so horribly hard about a repot or two and then it always takes hours it always takes so much longer than i think it does especially especially because i am very indecisive and picky and i can never make up my mind so that never helps but we are done with her i think she looks so much better like this where she just has a couple of leaves and of course she looks crazy now because she needs to adjust but once she starts growing I think she will be a lot better in this setup where you can actually appreciate the leaves versus the setup where she was very just bushy. I mean, maybe somebody does prefer the bushy setup, which is obviously everybody has the right to their opinion, which is fine. But me personally, I do like more the, the, clean, uh, the clean look, especially because I do want this plant to grow up grow up mature because once this plant matures it gets these gorgeous gorgeous big leaves and I don't think they can really mature or stand out if they are all kind of crammed together in a pot. All right, we only have one more thing left and this should be the easy thing to do. So I am excited to be done and we're gonna be doing another moss pole extension or another moss pole extension. This is the first moss pole extension of this video. And it'd be my epipremnum, what are you called? Epipremnum albo. Very, very stunning planty. She is not yet at the top of her pole, but I do want to prepare her because she is a pretty fast grower. So I just, and I'm going on a trip soon. So I just want to be prepared in case she decides to run and grow like crazy. But yeah, this is such a stunning plant. I love her so much. Basically grew her from small little cuttings that I took of my other Epipremnum pinnatum, Albo, which is the hanging version. And that one is very, very low variegated, like super, super low variegated, basically reverted. And it had like one stem that was kind of variegated, it had like little splotches. And I took that because I wanted to grow it out. And now it has stunning, stunning variegation. It does have one vine that actually did revert which is unfortunate but I'm just keeping it on there for for funsies she is currently on a wire mash pole and oops, loud and I want to move her to one of these closed backs because again I'm trying to move my whole collection to these closed back moss poles so I'm basically just gonna assemble this moss pole attach it on top of here and then we're gonna be done the moss pole is assembled and now this is gonna be quite messy I mean this whole freaking process is quite messy but yeah I have to basically shove this moss pole on top of this moss pole and there is gonna be moss pole material going everywhere the reverted one is actually a little bit to the side but i honestly don't even care if that one doesn't continue to grow but i will fix it okay now i just need to to put this onto the pole and be very very careful because it's so easy to break your plants i did this with my glorious over here actually i tried to do a similar thing but i was a little bit too rough with it and i accidentally broke a leaf so yeah but this time we did it and obviously this isn't like the prettiest or most stable setup whatever because it is obviously two very different types of moss poles however with time obviously this plant will continue to grow it will eventually did i actually oh i actually did this wrong did i no 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 i did it good i did it good never mind uh, obviously eventually this plant will grow and then i can remove this bottom pole and just keep this top pole which is what i want so yeah for now it's not the most stable or the prettiest setup but i'm fine with that anyway i'm gonna call it quits here i am so tired i did not expect this to be such a hard job but it indeed was. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you had a great, lovely time. To recap, we had our little philodendron esmeraldense. We had our epipremnum pinnatum variegated albo. And we had our little soderoy baby. 
I will definitely keep you updated on how these are doing but I am pretty certain that they will all be doing fine. Let me know in the comment section below which of these plants are your favorite. If you have any of these plants, let me know any tips and tricks if you have. Until next time, have a lovely day. Goodbye.